So now that we've worked out how to describe lines in three dimensions, it's time to have a look at planes. This is a new concept because we haven't really been able to look at planes in two dimensions because there's only one plane to look at. So when we looked at describing our lines in three dimensions, we saw that we could use a point on the line, for example, this point P, which would have coordinates x0, y0, and z0, and a vector parallel to the line, say this vector here. And then any point on the line, given by position vector r, with coordinates x, y, z, was given by the position vector of our point plus some scalar multiple of the vector in the direction of the line. So it's tempting to think that maybe we could use a similar idea if we wanted to describe a plane, but unfortunately that's not possible. So if we head over to GeoGebra, if you have a look at this plane over here, all these vectors lie on the plane, but they're all pointing in different directions. So using a vector that lies on the plane isn't going to work for describing a plane. However, we do have another option. If we look at vectors that are orthogonal to the plane, which are called normal vectors, these all point in the same direction. So let's head over to GeoGebra. And if we look at this, it's the same plane, but now we've got a whole lot of vectors that are at right angles to the plane. They are called normal vectors. And notice that these all point in the same direction. So we're going to use normal vectors in order to describe the equation of a plane. So we're going to describe a plane in three dimensions using a point on the plane with position vector r0, just as we had a point on the line. And in this case, in our diagram over here, here's our point on the plane that we're going to have a look at. And there's the position vector. So this is a particular point on the line. And then we're also going to use a vector which is orthogonal to the plane called a normal vector. And our vector n, we can see down here, is this vector here, which is normal to the plane. And it's going to take a little while to develop how exactly we explain a plane using these two things, so um, follow along. It's going to take a couple of pages. So as we did with the equation of a line, we're going to let r be a position vector of any particular of any point on the plane, just as we did um, with the line. So the, the thing that we really want to describe is we want to find all the possible values of this point P. So the key insight that we're going to use is that if we have any vector on the plane, it's orthogonal to our normal vector. So I've just sketched one vector on the plane here, but you can imagine any other vector that I have lying flat on the plane is going to be at right angles if you shift it to starting at the bottom of the normal vector. It's going to be at right angles with the normal vector. And so we can actually use the dot product because we know that if two things are at right angles to, to each other, then their dot product is zero. So if we take any vector on the plane and we dot it with our normal vector, we know that our dot product is going to equal zero. So now we know the normal vector for our plane, but what we need is we need a vector on the plane. So we construct a vector on the plane by using the position vector of our particular point on the plane, so our p0, and the position vector of our general point on the plane, which is our vector r. And if we take our vector r minus vector r0, that is going to give us a vector r minus r0, which lies on the plane. And depending on which particular point we're trying to find coordinates for will have a different value for r minus r0, but that vector is still always going to lie on the plane. 
So now what we do is we know that if we take our normal vector and we dot it with our vector that lies on the plane, it's going to be equal to zero. And this must be true for every single point that lies on the plane. So we have an equation that looks a little bit strange, but nonetheless is true, which is that our normal vector dotted with our position vector minus the position of a particular point is equal to zero. Just to be absolutely clear, this normal ve vector is a constant. It's something that we know the value of. Um, we're usually going to say that it has coordinates a, b, c. And this vector r0 is also a constant. And it has coordinates x0, y0, and z0. But the variability that comes in is this vector over here, which gives all the points on the line. And it has coordinates x, y, and z. It might look a little more straightforward if we actually multiply this out. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our vector abc, which is our normal vector, and we want to dot it with our position minus a particular point. And we want to have that that is equal to zero. Well, let's work this out. We've got a, b, c dotted with, and this is going to give us a vector x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught, and this has to be equal to zero. And if we work out the dot product, we're going to get a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught. And this whole thing has to be equal to zero. And now you can start to see it looking a little bit more like the equations we're used to dealing with. Just remember that x, y, and z are our only variables, all the rest are constants. So before we look at other ways of expressing a plane, we just want to make sure that we can use this equation. So we want to find the equation of a plane through the point 2, 4, minus 1 with the normal vector 2, 3, 4. And we also want to find the axis intercepts and sketch the plane. So we know that the equation of our plane is given by normal vector dotted with position vector minus position of a particular point on the plane equaling zero. So we know what this normal vector is, so we just need this position vector r0, which is the position vector of a point on the plane. So if we've got a point 2, 4, minus 1 on the plane, this has position vector r0, which is 2, 4, minus 1. OK, so we can work out r minus r0. So this is x, y, z minus 2, 4, minus 1. So this gives us x minus 2 y minus 4, z plus 1. And now we want to find the dot product. So we want the dot product of n, our normal vector, with our difference of vectors. So we've got our normal vector, which is 2, 3, 4, and we're dotting it with x minus 2, y minus 4, z plus 1. So off we go. We've got 2x minus 4 plus 3y minus 12 plus 4z plus 4. And we know that this has to be equal to 0. So we know that this whole thing is equal to 0. 
And so finally, we can combine some of the constants that we've got and we can end up with an equation that looks like this. 2x plus 3y plus 4z minus 12 is equal to 0. And this is the equation of the plane. Now one of the things to notice is that in this form, if you look at the coefficients of your x, y, and z, they are, in fact, the coordinates of the normal vector, which, if we go back to the form that we had up here, makes sense. We've got our a, b, and c times our x, y, and z. So if you get given the equation of a plane in this form that we have here, you can immediately tell what the normal vector is. It's just the coefficients of the x, y, and z terms. Now, just as we had different forms of equations describing lines in R3, we have different forms of equations for planes. And in fact, we've just seen one of those. So if we look at our vector equation, where our vector is, our normal vector is ABC, we can expand, as we've seen, our dot product into this form over here. And if we go one step further in expanding this out, we've got ax plus by plus cz plus, and then we've got a whole term over here, which is minus ax naught minus by naught minus cz naught is equal to zero. And usually what we do is we combine this into one constant d, which gives us what's called the scalar equation of a, of a plane, which is ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. Now we still had two parts to this question to answer. We needed to find the axis intercepts and sketch the plane. So we had the equation of the plane. So our axis intercepts, it's pretty much just like finding the axis intercepts for a line, except now we've got three. So we've got the x-axis, and on the x-axis y and z are equal to zero. So this tells us that we have an axis intercept at 2x is equal to 12, which gives us that x is equal to 6. So that axis intercept is 6, 0, 0. Our y-axis has x and z equal to 0, so plugging that in we get that y is equal to 4, so that axis intercept is 0, 4, 0. And then using the same for the z-axis, which has x and y equal to 0, gives us that z is equal to 3. So 0, 0, 3 gives us the z-axis intercept. And we can use the axis intercepts to get some idea of what the plane looks like. So let's draw some axes. We've got our z-axis pointing up like that, and our y-axis orthogonal, and here's our x-axis. And let's plot our axis intercepts. So I'm going to plot my x-axis intercept. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's heading over there. Then y, I've got one, two, three, four, somewhere there, and one, two, three, for z. And 
So we can start to get an idea of what the plane looks like by connecting these points. So if we connect these points, this is a triangle on the plane and we can see that it is chopping off the origin of our um, axis system. So I'm going to plot the actual plane on using GeoGebra and then show you how this triangle relates to that. So here we've got the 3D GeoGebra version of this plane and if we plot our axis intercepts as we did on our sketch and connect those points you can see how the little triangle that we drew shows one part of the plane and the rest of the plane extends out like so. So if you have to draw a plane in a test or exam, just sketching this little bit would be fine, the triangle, because it's a lot harder to try and make something reasonable that looks like GeoGebra. So here's another question to try. Find an equation of the plane that passes through the points 1, 3, 2, 3, minus 1, 6, and 5, 2, 0. So I suggest that you give this a try by yourself before looking at the solution. Okay, so let's give this a go. So we know that if we want to find the equation for a plane, we need a point on the plane, which is fine. We've in fact got three possibilities there. And the next thing is that we need a normal vector to the plane. And that we don't have. We only have three points on the plane. But the key idea here is that if we take any two vectors on our plane and we take their cross product, we know that the cross product of two vectors lies orthogonal to those two vectors. So if our two vectors lie on the plane, then their cross product must be perpendicular to the plane. And that means we could use it as a normal vector. So this means that we need to find two vectors on our plane. And the idea here is if we've got our three points wherever they are, I'm just putting them wherever. So these are our three points on the plane. Then in fact, we can find a bunch of different vectors on the plane. For example, we could find the vector QP. because we can take the difference in coordinates from P to Q, and that will give us a vector. We could find the vector PR. Uh, we could find the vector RQ. And in fact, we could find the other vectors, for example, PQ and RP, by going in opposite directions. So we have have six possible vectors that we could find. We've got QP, PR, RQ, and then going in different directions, PQ, RP, and QR. And those are all vectors that, are, that lie on the plane. So in a question like this, you're going to get slightly different answers depending on which vectors you pick, but nonetheless you will still get the same plane. It will just maybe have a slightly different equation. So for example, let's have a look at the vector QP. So this is going to be 1 minus 3, because we're saying the point P minus the point Q. 3 plus 1, 2 minus 6, so that gives us a vector minus 2, 4, minus 4. And let's just take the vector QR. And we're going to take <coughs> 5 minus 3, 2 plus 1, 0 minus 6, and this gives us a vector 2, 3, minus 6. 
So both these vectors lie on the plane, and you could have used any of the others. But the key thing that we're going to do is use these vectors to find a normal vector. So we know that if we take the cross product of QP and QR, it's going to be orthogonal to the plane. So we can use our QP cross QR as our normal vector. So let's work out that cross product. We've got QP cross QR. If you remember working out the cross product, we need to have I, J, K, I, J, K. We write out the coordinates of the first vector, so minus 2, 4, minus 4, minus 2, 4, minus 4, and the second vector, 2, 3, minus 6, 2, 3, minus 6. And then we have our I component is going to be minus 24, minus, minus 12, so that's plus 12. Our J component is going to be minus 8, um, minus 12. And our K component is going to be minus 6, minus 8. And if we finish that up, we get that our normal, normal vector is equal to minus 12, minus 20, minus 14. So our equation of the plane if we're going to use the scalar equation is minus 12 x minus 20 y minus 14 z is equal to d and we still need to find this d. that's easy to do if we just plug in any particular point when we've got three of them we can find our D. So for example if we use our point R which is 5 to 0 we get minus 12 5 minus 20 times 2 minus 4 times 0 is equal to d and so this gives us that d is equal to minus 100. So finally we can write out the equation of our plane which is minus 12x minus 20y minus 14z is equal to minus 100. If you used different vectors to find your cross product, so if you hadn't used QP and QR, you might have got a slightly different looking equation. So for example, the equation 12x plus 20y plus 14z is equal to 100 is the same plane. You can see you've just multiplied through by 1, I mean by minus 1. And you could also have found 6x plus 10y plus 7z is equal to 50. And that's also the same plane. Here you've just divided through by 2. And there are a variety of other equations that all give the same plane. So now we're at a point where we can actually finish filling in this table that we started with a couple of weeks ago. We were thinking about if we're in 3D space, we know that we can express a point using three coordinates. We know about lines now, we have a set 
of different equations. So we have a vector equation and we have symmetric and we have the parametric equations. And now we know that a plane in three dimensions looks something like ax plus bx plus by plus cz is equal to d. So the thing that I always find interesting is that in three dimensions it is our plane that looks sort of like the equation that we had for a line in two dimensions. Whereas in three dimensions our equations for lines look nothing like the two-dimensional lines that we had. And you can think about what you would have for lines and planes if you went into more dimensions, but we're not going to cover that in this course.